Hey, good afternoon. Good to see you there. Well, call question metrics. Uh, next 20 minutes, we will talk about the goal question metrics and why? Because I believe that call question metrics is a very powerful tool that helps to keep a real goal on mind. Okay. I believe that questions may change the world. What do you think about, I, about that? True, false, yes, no? It depends on question. Depends. It depends. The best, the best answer ever. Will you marry me? That question may change the world, for sure. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> OK. Uh, before we talk about the uh, goal, questions, metrics, I would like to tell you about the uh, about the diet. <laughs> I would like to tell you about the diet. Surprised? Well, I have a very crucial information for a uh, foreign guests. Well, here in Poland, we joke that we have at least 5 million of diet specialists. The same people are high attitude climbing specialists and last two years, the same people are, are virologists. So let's back to the diet. The good part about the diet is that probably the goal seems to be very clear. It's all about our weight, but probably we are measuring a wrong metric because this is not about to gain 10 pounds or lose 10 pounds. It's all about to get healthier. So yes, of course, weight is a very obvious metric, but not always to gain 10 pounds or get 10 pounds or lose 10 pounds. It's the only answer, especially when my liver is begging for help. So let's try to translate it to the IT world. Look at this short comic story. Sad but true. Well, all right. Some people may think that the most important IT measurements are defects or bugs, but probably these people just lost the sight that the most important goal, the real holy grail, it's the software quality. Uh, that's why I would like to tell you about the goal question metric. I know it's nothing new. It was created in 1960s, uh, so it's nothing new. So I will also spend some time to give you some outcomes, some findings from the sessions that I've moderated. So I will show you some of my, my outcomes. Um, let's talk about basics. Come on. <laughs> oh, five, six. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the, 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 the basics. So, first we have a goal. It's uh, obvious. Usually we have a goal. Then we have a metric. That th Then we have a question. Sorry, metrics later. Then we have a question that if answers, it helps us to understand, to figure out if the goal we have, it's the, that one goal we really need. And after that, we have a metric that helps us to answer these questions. How do you find it? It sounds easy, but let's talk about some example. Let's say that we would like to increase profit from our uh, product. I know you have a great appetite to give me some metric right now, but no question first. What kind of question can we ask? For instance, is our sales growing? And after that question, it's very easy to find some uh, metric, for instance, revenue. All right, one more example, if you don't mind. 
let's say that we would like to increase product team uh, efficiency. Yeah, efficiency. Isn't that uh, ironic? But okay. What kind of questions should be asked to understand what does the product team efficiency really means and if it's growing or not? The question might be, how long is the time to market? And after that, probably you will find some metrics like lead time or cycle time. All right? So, if you are still not convinced that it really works, I would like to tell you that. Goal question metric framework was created for NASA in 1960s. You know, it was a time when they already gone to space. So, it's a little tricky and a little funny that they didn't know how to measure their success. If you're still not convinced, use Google, use YouTube, probably you will find more effective or at least more handsome presenters that will explain your goal question metrics framework. And now, please, uh, let me share some uh, my outcomes, my findings from the sessions that I've moderated. Uh, I remember, ah, yeah, the first lesson that I learned is that goal question metrics helps to define a goal and make it really awesome, really great, maybe even more sexy. So, uh, and I'm talking about product goal, I'm talking about the project goal, I'm talking about individual or team goals, all right? I remember the case, I remember the session with my colleague, we spoke about her goal, her team. I asked him, okay, what is your goal? And she told me that her goal is focus on tool A and, class, and, uh, and client needs. I said, all right, I like that goal. It's very easy. Really, I like that goal. But no, and tell me something about these clients. So she told me about his clients. She told me that, uh, she told me about his clients. I asked what, what kind of problem these clients have, these problems. How are you going to solve the, these problems in your application? What does the success mean? What does the failure mean? Uh, who they are and so on and so on. After these questions, after these answers, we agreed to rephrase a little bit the initial goal and we agreed to call it enable the implementation of marketing strategies using tool A. I knew nothing about the marketing strategies, so I could ask some silly questions. Uh, silly questions, sorry. Uh, so I ask a couple of silly questions. For instance, what does it mean, marketing strategies? What does it mean? What does the success mean? What does the failure mean? How these marketing strategies are supporting in your, uh, in your application? What kind of decisions can be made based on these marketing strategies? Answers, questions, again and again, and we rephrase this, uh, that, 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 that goal again. We agreed to call it support achieving clients' business goals through the implementation of marketing strategies using tool A. And of course, during that session, we found a couple of interesting metrics, but about later about that. Um, one more example, if you don't mind. That this time, more project-related example. The initial goal was plan project A work. You know, it means that we need to understand what must be done to finish project A with a success. But I kept the original spelling because I like it very much. Um, so again, we started to ask. Uh, we started to asking the questions. What is the scope of that project A? Why that project must be uh, planned? What is the real need behind that project? Who are the beneficiaries? What does the success mean? What does the failure mean? That's my favorite questions. Uh, what is the deadline, of course? And again, we rephrase the goal, that initial goal, to that goal. Plan project A, work to ensure delivery be before the customer's deadline. But that was not the end. We started to ask 
And other questions, you know, product managers talking about projects. So what are we asking for uh, priorities, workarounds and trade-offs? So we ask next question, are all, um, there are features in the scope, are they all equally important? Yes, of course not. Uh, and again, we decided to rephrase that goal again, ensure delivery of the most important requirements in project A before a deadline while not causing delays in other initiatives. The lesson I learned is that, dear product managers, having a goal question in mind, having goal question metric framework in mind, you will be a great project managers. Isn't it attractive? Okay, it's time for questions. It's time for opening questions, because I remember, honestly, that not all my sessions were so easy. Sometimes I had a serious problem how to start goal question metric session. And if you have any problem how to start that session, you could use some uh, um, questions. And these questions are about the users. So the main question is, what is, who is the main beneficiary of that project, product, application, and so on. So it's always worth to ask about his pains, gains, successes, and so on and so on. The very opening question is about what you don't know. This is very opening questions. I know that I know nothing. That might be very opening question. Because if you ask that question, what you don't know about your user, you may hear a lot of hypotheses and the compliance, of course. So my advice is please focus on the hypotheses. So ask your partner, do you have any idea how to prove these hypotheses? Because proving means measuring. So it's proving means measuring. That question will trigger a bunch of new potential metrics. But, this is very important, not all metrics are worth to measure. It's important and obvious, but not all metrics are worth to measure. So if you create these uh, metrics, potential metrics, for each of these metrics you should ask three, three important questions. First question First question is, <laughs> first question is, do you have an impact on that metric? If you have no impact for the metric, you should not measure that metric. You should not use that metric. Second question is, uh, do you understand what impacts that particular metric? If you see 20% fall, it's good or bad. If it's growing or not, it's good or, or bad. If you don't know the answer for these very basic questions, you should not measure that metric. And there is one more question. What is the cost of the measuring? I still remember the case that my developers told me there is no sense to measure that particular metric. Why? Because the gathering data for that metric was very expensive. Data was gathering in some data harbor or some data lake, and that process was painful, time-consuming, and in general, they told me, don't do this. So this is the, the, the third question. What is the cost of the measuring, and if it's cheap or not. So as you see, you need free yes. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the metrics. Uh, that's an interesting metric, popularity. I know it doesn't seem maybe very professional, but probably you as a professional, you may know that metric as a product feature usage. What does it mean? It means that our applications, our products have a dozens of features. So the very crucial question is, which feature is the most uh, popular? If you know which feature is the most popular, 
you know which features should be polished, should be improved, you know which bugs should be uh, fixed first, you know which feature gives you the biggest value. So having a deep understanding about the popularity, you have a very deep understanding about the priorities in your product backlog. One more metric, please. Please, please. Uh, I'm not a fan of uh, net promoter score uh, metrics, metric, but uh, for sure it's worth to measure customer happiness or customer unhappiness. Uh, I remember the case of my colleague. We spoke about his team, about his goal, and he told me that he is measuring a number of calls to the call center. Why? Because his mission is to relieve customer care processes. My colleague measured number of calls to call centers, and he is happy when that number is decreases. And by the way, by the way, call centers, I will always see that picture when I'm thinking about the call centers. Always. <laughs> okay. 20 minutes ago, I started that presentation with a statement that questions have a power to change the world. Even if it was just cheap attention grabber, <laughs> I really believe that the proper questions helps you to understand and define goal and make it really awesome, really great. I also truly believe that proper questions help you to understand customer needs and develop a product that your customers love. And finally, I really believe that goal question metric framework will help you to create a bulletproof metrics that will help to measure your success, guys. Your success. Thank you so much.